every moment of my life, every moment of my life, yeah. Oh yes, oh, I live this earthly thing. So I will listen to your words. Display my faithfulness so true Because you gave your life for me Now I will give my life to you, to you Glory to God in the highest That's the God whom we serve and worthy of all glory and honor Welcome once again to this The Know Your Bible program Here we are premiering on Church Media TT so this is the place to be at this time. Go to your YouTube and then of course it's Church Media TT. We'll be happy to have you with us. And of course, you know, we want to encourage members as we put the link out. It makes it so much easier. You can send that to any number of people that you want. It's a way to invite people on. You send them a link and they can just open their phone and click, you know, and, and they get there. Rather than saying, don't forget to go to Church Media TT, you give them the link, they are more likely to just give a click and open up. So let's take advantage of this opportunity, Church. We are mandated to share the gospel. So we have opportunity. You may not be able to sit down and teach somebody, but you can expose them to by providing the opportunity for them to view and hear the content. So do that. I'm sure every one of us who are on here, if even we have... 15 or 20 on, we all know at least 10 people, correct? For whom we have phone contact, WhatsApp. WhatsApp, it won't take you a long time. Psh, psh, and send it off. If one alone in the 10 that we send joins, and 15 of us do that, we'll have 15 more people on, all right? And perhaps one or two of those might have interest and want to know more about Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Let's try to know more about Jesus and to give him glory and honor. Let us pray. Father, thank you, O oh God, for being the great God that you have revealed yourself to be, O oh God. Your word has established, Father, that you are the almighty, all-powerful, creator, giver, and sustainer of life. You have acted, Father, in the midst of our dilemma that has caused much pain and sorrow in this world, sin, and you have given up your only son to pay the price that we could not pay. Thank you for this blessed gospel. Simple as it is, O oh Lord, it is your power to save people. And therefore help us not to be ashamed, but to declare it at every opportunity we have so we can share it with the world to know the truth. Father, we ask for your blessing at this time. For those who have joined us, Father, we pray that their hearts will be convicted to share with others and for those who come father as a result of being invited we ask lord that your word will pierce their hearts and that father you will help us to reach out and to reach them before it is too late watch over our nation build our leaders help them to father rule with integrity and honesty and in the fear of almighty god continue father to guide us and protect us it is our it is our prayer in jesus holy and divine name we ask it Amen. All right, so as we wind down, we are going to be looking, as we continue to look at the greatest prayer ever prayed, the contents of the prayer. So we've said the prayer is the greatest prayer ever prayed because of who prayed it? Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Creator and Sustainer. He is the one who prayed the prayer. The occasion that demanded the prayer was a very important and serious occasion and the world is lost and jesus is going to go to the cross and the pain and agony and the suffering not just the death but the mode of death and all of the suffering prior to the death we cannot ignore that you see so the occasion that demanded the prayer gives weight to the prayer the contents of the prayer inform us about this prayer and who is praying it and what is what it is that should be weighing heavily on our minds there are great themes in this prayer as we said you know uh, jesus takes us 
uh, to eternity past and then moves us into the future glory. He demonstrates the love of the Father for Jesus, for believers. And we are saying that the prayer contains great petitions. In 17, 1 to 5, we have seen the petitions that he has made talking about the importance of the ministry that he came to fulfill and his relationship with the Father and his dependence upon the Father in this great mission. He says, glorify me, Father. He says, keep them, keep them, these men you have given to me, keep them safe. Don't let the devil sift them. He says, sanctify them, set them apart, verses 13 to 19, where he says, uh, that's an important piece of scripture that we're going to read. He says, but now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them, these men you have given me, your word, and the world, the people at large, has hated them. Because they are not of the world, they are not of the system, even as I am not of the world, the system that is. I do not ask thee to take them out of the world, that is the system, but to keep them from the evil one. See, the system is governed by the evil one. And they are in the system, and he's not saying, I'm praying that you take them out, because they are there in the system to effect change in the system. And while they work to effect change in the system, I'm praying that the evil one, you know, that you will keep them from the evil one. Because he's going to attack. He says they are not of the world. They are not of the system. Even as I am not of the world. And we should all understand as Christians, we are not of the world. We are in the world. We are in the system. That is the world as a system. You see? Nothing wrong with the planet Earth. It's affected by sin, yes. But God created it for us to enjoy. But there's a system that is referred to as the world in the Bible. And it refers to the existing system that governs the affairs of society. And Satan is behind that. So he's saying now in 17, sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart in the truth so that they will not deviate from it. You see, he says, your word is truth. And then he goes on to say, As thou didst send me into the world, you sent me here into the system, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. This is really weighty. Jesus recognizes the possibility of corruption, the possibility of Satan sifting them. The possibility of the pressure getting to them. And so he's emphasizing that he is sanctified them in himself as he sanctified. He says, I do not ask. This is important. A petition is being made. I do not ask in behalf of these alone. That is, these disciples you have given me, these men. I am not asking in behalf of them alone. See, we just talked about him saying, sanctify them, protect them from the evil one. I am not asking on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word. Now, why would he ask for protection for these men? Because if these men are not protected, whose word is he going to refer to? For people who will come to believe in him. People would come to believe in him through the word of these men. So it's important for these men to be able to speak that word. So that people who hear that word from them, or hear the word that they are delivering, they would come to believe in Jesus. He says, so that they may all be one all those who come to believe in me through their word that those believers will now all be one even as you father are in me and i in you well see the earlier part of the prayer jesus already established his purpose and his connection with the father and the oneness of the purpose to achieve 
So he's saying that they should have the same one purpose and understanding. He says, so, so their unity should be the type of unity that we have. There should be nothing to divide, to drive a wedge between, because we have the same focus and objective. He says that they also may be one in us. Why? That the world, all those people out there in the system, the world at large may believe that you did send me. You know when Christianity is divided, it's a slap in the face of the gospel. Do you understand why Satan has succeeded and is continuing to work in the area of creating division in Christendom? Do you know that there are probably about 30,000 different religious uh, groups under the umbrella of Christianity in our world? I was just blown out of my wits to think, to hear that statement. How is that possible? For one Bible, one message. Ah, uh, Satan has convinced the world. That's how you see it. That's how you see it. That's how you see it. Who is to say you are right and I am wrong? So every man sees it in his own eyes. But you know what? We go to school and we see it the way the writer wrote it. Because we write the exam based upon what the writer wrote. <laughs> and we get it right or we get it wrong, correct? You learn how to solve the equation. And that's how they play it out. And you go in the exam and you do your own thing. Huh? You do your own thing. What's going to happen? So you see, it's just for us to realize. Here it is, Jesus is making a prayer, a petition for believers every year to be one. But the basis of that oneness is the obedience of the same message. You see, once I change the message, I create a different perspective. And that different perspective sets me apart from you. So if the church started off by believing, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, as the apostles thought. And then somebody pops up within that group and says, you know what? Baptism is not really important. He that believes is saved. That person can get baptized afterwards if they want. Then you think the group is going to remain as one? No, no, no. It's going to split. Those who take that new position will stay together. Those who hold to the former position will stay together. And then within that, somebody pops up with something else again. That's different. So what's going to happen? You split again. So you have that situation orchestrated by the devil and people don't understand it they think that that is a beautiful thing that we all can just serve God however we want to but we're serving the same God so is the same God supposed to accept every woman fancy that people come up with and say okay fine yeah you you serve me with honesty and sincerity so I accept it that's not possible that's not the we need to have the right concept of who God is a messed up concept of God will produce a messed up life in relation to God. And so Jesus makes this great petition that all believers might be one. Remember, there's a plea for this unity. Paul says to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his authority, that you all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be joined together in the same mind and in the same spirit. What is he saying? He's not saying speak the same thing, meaning if I say jump, you say jump. If I say I'm going to eat steak or fish, you say the same thing. No, that's not. He's speaking about the same thing regarding salvation, regarding the word of God. Don't speak what you want or what you think. Speak what God says. And that should be our desire. And even if we are not seeing everything the same way, the salvation message is so straightforward. It's like 2 plus 2 equals 4. And it doesn't take a Solomon to figure it out. It just takes an honest person to stay with it. And too many people are dishonest. People see religion and a system of making a living and making money. And you can't tell me that we are so blind that we can't see that. 
that it's worthwhile to start a church here and a church here and a church everywhere like you have a, a Burger King in this corner and that corner or RC in that corner or KFC in the next corner the more you have the merrier it is but this is about people's souls ladies and gentlemen if you do not obey the gospel as is revealed by Jesus in scripture preached by the holy apostles you are going to remain lost in your sins even though you feel saved Salvation is not based upon feelings, my friend. Feelings come and feelings go and feelings are deceiving. My warrant is the word of God. Nothing else is worth believing. So says Martin Luther. You see, it's so important to understand. Jesus prays for the unity of all believers. He also prays that they may behold his glory. This prayer has three great divisions. I want you, I mentioned it before somewhat, but hear it again. The prayer has three great divisions. First of all, Jesus prays for himself. John 17, 1 to 5. Then Jesus prays for his disciples. Verses 6 to 19. Then Jesus prays for all believers. Verses 20 to 26. You know, if you have a brief examination of its contents, it will reveal the greatness of this prayer and why it is worthy of careful study. Finally, a fourth reason why this, another reason why, this is the greatest prayer because the victory that is revealed in the prayer. The concern of Jesus is evident, pertaining to the world, which is used 19 times and the effect it can have on the believers. It's important. A justifiable concern, for we live in a world which is deceived, blinded by Satan, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. A world that is dangerous, and when I say a world, I'm not just speaking about a physical planet, a world which is a system made up of people and ideas and policies, society, so to speak. It's dangerous. John says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. In the system, that is. For all that is in the world, the, love of the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, these are not of the Father. They are of the world, and the world will pass away. This system will come to an end. And all those who hold on to it and live by it will have nothing to hold on to when it passes. Christ gives us a new system. This world is defiled, and it's defiling all those who accept it. John chapter 1 and verse 27. It is a divided world. This is self-evident, especially in regards to religion. You know, there's no unity. And all the call that we should be one cannot happen because we don't believe the same thing. A Seventh-day Adventist, for example, is not going to do the same thing and join up with a Mormon to worship because they don't believe the same thing. It doesn't take a Solomon to figure that out. That's a fact. That's not trying to get down on anybody. That's just seeing things and calling it the way it is. It's just not the same. So, yet, we are told that Jesus has overcome the world. As he told his disciples prior to this prayer in John 16 and verse 33, we talked about it. He said, take courage. I have overcome the world. As he told his disciples prior to this, as we said, to this prayer, in this prayer, the victory in Jesus is revealed. The world may be deceived, but Jesus has shown us reality in revealing the only true God. Verse 3, this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This world may be dangerous, but Jesus provides security as we are kept in God's name. Verses 11 and 12. And I am no more in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world, and I came to thee. The Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me. Jesus promises that he will keep us in him, in God's name. This world is defiled. It's defiled, but Jesus provides sanctification through God's word. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Is it possible to have contact without contamination? In the COVID-19, they say avoid contact, keep social distancing. But let me tell you this. The gospel is so powerful 
that you can have contact be among people who are sinners and committing sin and yet not become contaminated because the blood of Jesus is more powerful to keep you clean if you keep your faith and trust in God so you know what we will be afraid of COVID but we can't afford to let COVID stop us from preaching the gospel to lost people because you know what they will die and go to hell this world is divided but Jesus offers unity through his glory verse number 22 so these four reasons that makes this prayer the greatest prayer ever told as we see them we realize because of the person who prayed it the occasion that demanded it the contents of it and the victory that is revealed in it the greatest prayer ever prayed the high priestly prayer of jesus the lord's prayer in truth and in fact not just taught by jesus in matthew 6 but here in john 17 jesus opens up the horizon it's a show us it is a prayer in behalf of those who are the disciples of jesus if you are not a disciple jesus prayer is that you first become his disciple is that you first allow yourself the opportunity to embrace the salvation message so that you can become a child of god how that happens you hear the word of god as jesus says those who hear and believe in him now you have faith in god you repent of your sins luke 13 3 i tell you nay except you repent you'll all likewise perish you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart romans 10 9 and 10 that jesus christ is the son of god and you are buried in water or baptized for the forgiveness of your sin acts 2 38 mark 16 16 first peter 3 21 baptism that also now save us in the context of your faith so let us know how we can help you we want to share christ with you we want to do all we can to help you to have a new life and a new relationship with god we hope that this has been a blessing to you as much as it has been a blessing to me so put a note there let us know you are there pop us any questions or comments we'd be happy to hear from you we want to do things better more effective meeting your needs and of course share with others don't forget church media tt everything is there for you to go back to and review god bless you and keep you and have a great and wonderful week and stay safe until next time i am a his listener bidding you god's blessing I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe What the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set me free indeed So I might live with him in glory I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe when the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set the thing free So I might live with him in glory